I am AP Tally, and this is Role Play Culture. Where is that tree? Where's the handle? He needs the axe. Where's the handle? Tree, help me find the handle. When it comes to artificers, more than their tools, more than their spells, their artificer infusions define them as characters more than anything else. The infusions that an artificer can make are basically magic items that an artificer can kind of make. You want a magic sword? I can do that. Magic armor? Give me an afternoon. Belt of giant strength? Sure! In 10 levels. Now, they're not actually making these magic items. No. They're just taking an everyday sword, suit of armor, belt, whatever, and then infusing them with their special brand of magic. Functionally, it's the same as the actual magic items with few key differences. If they use that infusion slot to infuse another item, then the magic ends and the item goes back to being you know, its mundane self. The same thing happens if the artificer dies, so there's that. Those infused items can be used by anyone, not just the artificer, which has some interesting applications. But here's an interesting little fact. As you might expect, the Artificer can only know so many infusions and only have so many items infused. The number of items you can have infused starts at 2 at level 2 and maxes out at 6 at level 18. But the number of infusions known is where things get curious. The Artificer usually knows twice the number of infusions as items that can be infused, 4 to start with and maxing out at 12. It's a lot of infusions that we know that are probably never going to get used. It's not unusual for someone playing an artificer to choose the infusions that they're going to stick with, and everything else just are just words on a character sheet, never to be used. But what if, just what if, we didn't have to do it that way? What if we choose a few infusions to keep in our repertoire for just the right occasion? I mean, we know all these extra infusions. You might as well make the best of them, right? But which infusions? Which infusions can be worth switching out for our core everyday infusions should the situation call for it? That is what we are here to discover today. So let's discuss three infusions for the Artificer in D&D 5e to keep in our back pocket. Sooner or later, you're going to have to tank a bout of bad breath from a dragon. Want a breath, man? And it will be really Nice if someone, preferably us, had resistance to whatever halitosis nightmare lizard burp we were just exposed to. That's where resistance armor comes in handy. We can't get this until 6th level, but that's alright. It's probably about when we start facing hard-hitting elemental effects anyway. This infusion, obviously, goes into a suit of armor, and it does require attunement. When you infuse the item, you pick a damage type at that moment. What are the energy types for the wearer of the armor to be resistant to? So they only take half damage for every instance of that damage type. Your options are pretty much of any of the damage types except the weapon ones. Piercing, bludgeoning, slashing. Yeah, so as long as you're wearing the armor, although it doesn't have to be you though, be nice to your party, uh, we have resistance to that chosen damage type. Now, this is not a core infusion that I would have going all the time. I would keep it in my back pockets until I really needed it. Sure, get that plus one to AC for most of the adventuring day. It will serve you well. But when it's time to face Venom Thrax, the green dragon, it sure would be nice if someone in that party had resistance to poison damage. Or multiple someones. We could have multiples of this armor going, if you wished. At level six, we have up to three infused items. It would be a big commitment to give out so much of our infusions, but Fighting something like a dragon sure seems like the right time. We haven't discussed this yet, but forethought, planning, and information gathering are really important for this whole thing to be worth it. It takes a long rest for us to switch out an infusion, and it takes a short rest for someone else to attune that fusion if it needs it. And we can be having someone else make use of these items. 
So things like divination magic, questioning allies, interrogating enemies can really help us know when the right time to switch to our B team. Using the scrying spell to know that the villain you're about to face tomorrow has summoned fire elementals to protect them could be clutch in knowing to fireproof your endies. Just knowing that you're going to Buffy the Vampire Slayer your way through a graveyard the next night and destroy some undead could be a clue to pack some necrotic resistance. So teamwork, good use of resources, common sense can be the key to victory. Or not at all, depending on your party. What? Our next infusion will come from the Replicate Magic Item Infusion. Now remember, with this infusion, when you choose it, you have to choose the specific magic item you're replicating. You can choose it multiple times and choose different magic items each time. And for us, we are going to choose the Bag of Holding. <laughs> calm down, calm down. I know how popular the Bag of Holding is. You don't need to tell me. Everybody wants to have one in their party. But do you really? Are you really going to sacrifice one of your precious few infused items to carry around the party's tote bag forever? And for the record, if you do use an infusion to haul around the party's stuff all day, or honestly, even are just willing to share any of your infusions anyway, then you, my dear sir or lady, are awesome. But I question the necessity of needing a 24-7 bag of holding. With the way 5th edition seems to be designed, the days of needing to haul around massive amounts of supplies, treasure, etc., over long periods of time, it's pretty few and far between, in my opinion. Yeah, sure. If you're playing the Tomb of Annihilation adventure, where you're trekking through a fantasy version of the Amazon, probably needful. Elsewise, though, sounds like it might be a little more useful for our back pocket, and that makes it ripe for this list. Before we go further, let me get this out of the way. We are not going to be talking about all the shenanigans involved with having multiple bags of holding and sending Taras to other planes of existence. I mean, yes, we are going to have all the tools to do that. Spoiler alert. But don't do it. Be kind to your DM. They work hard. I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. So the bag of holding is a nice convenience, but not, nece not a necessity all the time. But some of the time, it can be crucial. So after we slay the green dragon Venomthrax, we're going to need to move his horde out. One of the ways that the game can challenge players is for them to have to figure out ways to move large amounts of valuable treasure. A treasure horde of challenge rating uh, 5 to 10 contains approximately 10,000 coins of various denominations. That is 200 pounds in solid metal that need to be carried around. And green dragons were also known for coveting beautiful things like art, furniture, tapestries, all the other items that you might find that will weigh you down, and you've got to figure out how to move all of that with your weak nerd arms. <laughs> no! My weak nerd arms! This is a very old school sort of challenge that we still see today in some adventures, and that I am very fond of using, actually. Having the treasure that the party finds be in a not-so-convenient and easily transportable form that the players then need to figure out how to move it home safely? It sure would be nice if we could take a nap and then pop out a nice bag of holding and walk ourselves right to the bank. So we continue with another magic item replication choice. Remember, each one is their own infusion. But this one is going to be a little different. Mostly because it's not on the list that is presented to you in the book. So you might miss this one if you don't actually read the text all the way for the replicate item infusion. It states that we can alternatively pick any common magic item for our infusion. As a side note, if you have a copy of Eberron, or looking at the website like Wiki. you might not have the most up-to-date version of the Artificer. These sources say that the common uh, magic item has to come from Xanathar's Guide to Everything, but the newest version from Tasha's does not specify that. It can be from any book, as long as it's only a common magic item. 
And that brings us to the Spell Rot Tattoo. This little item varies in its rarity. It's a tattoo on your body that contains a spell that you can then cast. You don't have to be a spellcaster to use this. The stats for the spellcasting are already factored into the item. The rarity of this item is based on what spell is contained within, and cantrips and first level spells were of the common variety. But you need to have the infusion active to cast a spell, right? So what's the big hoopla? There is one first level spell that does not require concentration and is essentially permanent. Find familiar. And what a useful spell this is. I'm sure there are plenty of videos about how good this spell is, what you can do with it, so I'm not going to get too into detail about it. But why do we want this spell here and now for this? It's because we can create this infusion with the Find Familiar spell contained within. Remember, we don't actually need to know this spell or even have access to it. The infusion just works. Then we can cast the Find Familiar spell, which has a duration of instantaneous, take a long rest, and switch the spell rot tattoo out for something that's more of a core infusion. And with enough time and preparation, you can theoretically give a familiar to every member of your party, all by second level. Obviously, it takes time to do all this. You would only have two infusions at your disposal at this level, and it takes a long rest to switch them out. So those familiars wouldn't be as disposable or flexible as familiars are from more traditional sources. But still, keeping this infusion in your back pocket for when you need to conjure up a new familiar or change its shape is pretty nice to have around. And yes, if you really wanted to, you could conjure a familiar to fly two bags of holding to a Tarrasque, dump one inside the other, and tear a hole in the space-time continuum, if you must. If you believe in this beer thing, you, you, the miracle will happen, and then you'll want it to happen again tomorrow. You won't be one of these bastards who says Christmas is once a year and it's a fraud. It's not. It can happen every day. You've just got to want that feeling. So those are three interesting infusions to keep in our back pocket for just the right occasion. Instead of just forgetting half of all of our infusions in favor of the more consistent ones. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, smash that like button, tell us in the comments below. Which infusions do you keep on standby for the right circumstances? Check out some of our other videos, and I'll see you in the parlor.